50 and he's still kicking ass in the gym. So, what's up, Rich? Pretty good. How are you doing, Sergio? Not too bad. Did you have a great breakfast? I had a great breakfast this morning. Yeah. Me and I uh, Sly. Yeah. We had a great breakfast. I carried him around with me. What you had today? I had an everything omelet with everything in it. Yeah. And hash browns. Oh, I had the hash browns too today. Yeah. yeah. Eggs and hash browns. And a little bit of hot sauce on my eggs. Gotta have hot sauce on the eggs. Yeah, I, I had some that you <laughs> inspired you to lift? Like, who was your main character? You mean like in an interview life or on TV? Like, I, yeah. like on TV and just... Except I, me. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio. He wasn't even thought of back then, but I knew he was coming. Uh, I would pick up magazines somewhere and I would see Muscle Fitness magazines back then and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it and Lou Frigno. the 70s, but it's really inspiring. Even to this day, yeah. I have 
think I talked to a friend of mine, Doug Adams, one time, and I, and I told him it's like a drug. I, I just have to have it. I, it doesn't matter what hold, hurts me, I will be in the gym. If I have to crawl, I will go to the gym. That's your group intro. <laughs> I'm the same way. You know. if, if, I, if, I, if I don't lift for one week, I'm depressed. Yeah. I, I don't feel myself. tell what Arnold calls ordinary people that don't lift weights. Why don't you just skip a week? What's it hurting? What's it hurting? Well, you don't lift. You don't know. So shut up. And yeah, guys, make sure you like, you know, work around your injuries. Don't be stupid. Even you hurt, or, you know, we have, we, we have hunger to go and lift weights. We can't live without weights and training, but be smart. Still go to the gym. You just can't do what hurt it. If you hurt your shoulder, and f I didn't flat bench for two years one time, and I, but yet I could do dumbbell presses because of that. The bar stopped right here, and at this particular point, that hurt my shoulder. Once when the bar was right here, yeah. but dumbbells you can go past that. Yes. You can go deeper. So dumbbells didn't bother me. Flat, it was just that one exercise. So I had to quit bench pressing. But I did other things. So just because you're hurt don't mean that gives you an excuse to stay home. No, you can still go to the gym. I'll go to the gym, like I said before, even if I have to crawl. That's good. But what about the people that change? What do you think about people? People are... <laughs> Nowadays, people are... Yeah, that that's a touchy subject. Boy, I'll tell you. I, <laughs> I could go on for hours about the people change. I mean, people do things they should not do in the gym. You know? You're exactly right. You've seen it. Oh, we see it all the time. I, I see it all the time. The things that people do, as far as, I'll start with gym etiquette. Boy, back in our day, it was unheard of that you didn't put your weights back. Because it's not fair that somebody else has to come into the gym and take your shit off. They didn't put it on. Why should they have to unload your bar? If you loaded the bar... Take it off. Right. Don't if you don't want to do it, then don't come in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't want you there. You know, it's just it's just fairness, you know. It's just like at home. If you dirty a dish, don't get up from the table and walk away. Your mom didn't dirty that dish, you did. Put it in the sink. That's right. Put it in the dishwasher or whatever you may do. But it's not fair that somebody has to come in and clean up your mess. Yeah, or people that, you know, load in weights. Doing something else for talking to somebody else or texting or talking, yeah. and somebody else want to use it every single time. And yeah. I mean, go do your lift, you know, train, and let somebody else use it. Yeah. You know, I hate that. You know, if I see, if I see personally, if I see like somebody loaded and they talking or texting and doing something else they should they're not doing what they have to do, I'm gonna go and take that weights off. Say something, I'll say something back. It's like, hey, buddy, you, what are you doing here? It's a gym. If you come here, yeah. you lift. If you, if you text him, go text, but I'm going to use it. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And, and it's, it's just not fair to other people. Like, like Sergio just said, you know, load up the, 
machine, you're going to use it. You're going to use that bar. You're going to use that rack, squat rack that we have in our gym in Snap Fitness. We have a rack. It's a multi-rack. You can use it for bench squat, whatever you want. You can do everything in it except cook your dinner. Well, I've seen people load that up, and I've seen them walk away and, and go bullshit. It's all right to talk in a gym. I'm not saying you can't talk to somebody. Yeah, we don't, don't get me wrong on that. But what I'm saying is you're hogging up that. And somebody wants to use it, do you work out, get the hell off of it and let somebody else on it. Or another thing really drives me nuts is, is I like supersetting myself. But if you have a, a small gym, like say for Snap Fitness, and, and you've got five or six guys in there, it, it seems crowded. Don't superset. Don't take up that, then go over to that, and then go over to that. You know, there's other people want want to use one of those three machines. Superset when there's not too many people in there. Use your head. You know, don't make other people wait. You know, well I thought you were using that. No, I'm using that now. That no, you're not. You know, use one machine at a time. That really ticks me off. And another thing ticks me. How people change is the cockiness. Yeah, that's a, a lot of people like that. You know, weightlifters get tagged with the name Meathead. Have you ever seen that commercial with Rob Lowe? He has Rob Lowe, and then you have Meathead Rob Lowe, where they show him come out and there's a big, big guy, and we get tagged as being Meatheads. Well, we're really not Meatheads. Some of us are, some of us aren't. And you have your Meatheads and your Beach Pumpers, I call. Their head is this big, and instead of encouraging one another, right. they, they think everything's a competition with one another. So you'll have a, uh, it's, it's happened <coughs> numerous times where you have somebody getting ready for a show, and you have somebody lifting, and this person comes up, and you got a mirror the whole length of the freaking wall, and a mirror in the back room nobody's using it, and you come out there right next to them to pose, lift up your shirt, and show your abs, what the hell? You know, the judges will see your body on stage once your head shrinks, because your head is so freaking big, it, it takes away from everything else. And, and I won't mention names, but there's some people that's been doing that. And I won't mention their names, if you know what I mean. Sergio, right here. Here's a guy. <laughs> That's him right there, yeah. The Ukrainian beast, I call him. He trains, puts his earphones on, he bothers nobody. That's he it. trains, he does it for himself. He doesn't do it so that person over there can see what his abs look like or what. Yeah, he may pose in the mirror, but he's looking to see where his weaknesses are. He's not doing it right next to somebody else working out. I think you know, and, he, and he's an encouragement to other people. He helps other people. You got another one in there, Dave Rupert. He does the same thing. He, he puts his earphones on, he works out, he gets her done, gets the job done, and then he goes home. If somebody needs help, he helps them. You got MJ Miller. He's a personal trainer over there at Snap. He's another one. He'd help you out. All you have to do is ask. He trains hard, he works out hard. And there's some good people for you, right there. And even me, I'm not a bodybuilder. Now at the age 50, I go in just to maintain. And like I said, I'm a gym rat. I love to help people if they ask me any questions. But 
Nazi stuff. I've like never that. seen you lift heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> he, he, and I said to him, I can't go heavy today. He says, I never see you lift heavy. Anymore. And I said, and I laughed. I said, you know, that's true because I can't lift heavy anymore. The Italian power can't lift heavy anymore. Yeah, but you still. But I'm still in there. Yeah, that's what. And I want to help people, and I like lifting, and and that's what it's all about. And I've trained with Sergio, and. It's tough making through one of his workouts, but I did. I make it through every time. Now the next day he might sprint right out of bed and go to work. Me, I roll out of bed. And I have to waddle over to the coffee machine just to get going, because it takes me an hour, an hour and a half to get loosened up. If you'd see me walk when I get out of bed, you'd say, how does that guy ever make it to the gym? Well, that's just the way it is when you get older and, and you use your body the way we did. Start with the empty bar, do some reps, yeah. and gradually go up. Stretch them shoulders out, get them loosened up. Take a dumbbell, loosen them shoulders up. Just don't walk right in. Because and, that's and what we're paying off right now. That's I didn't do that, and because of that, I can't ever bench heavy again. You know, and I'll, I'll never ever squat heavy again. I'll never deadlift heavy again. Yeah. I was happy. I deadlifted with him one day, and I hadn't deadlifted in, what, 10 years? And just for the heck of it, I put 315 on there, and I pulled it up. I still got it in me. Yeah. And if I would train for that, I could get back up there. And I pulled 315 after not ever deadlifting for 10 years. And to a lot of other powerlifters, that's nothing. But to me, <coughs> not doing it for that long, I was pretty happy with that. you know. Yeah. But, and as far as bodybuilding, I wasn't a bodybuilder, but from what I've learned from watching Sergio and from what I've learned from watching Dave Rupert and, and MJ, you have got to stretch out and do more reps. Reps is what gets them, and keep your mind focused on the competition and you. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about that. You worry about you. Yeah. And make sure you guys, you know, don't be stubborn and, and you know, like, if you want <clears throat> some advice, don't be afraid to ask, you know, you know. Yep, and that, that's another very important thing. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you see a guy that you know is a bodybuilder and he's doing well and, and everything, you know, and you have a question, go up and ask him. Yeah, and there, there's a trainer that could, you know, set up. Training program. If you're a new guy to 
they, they call that. themselves, they give themselves the title person's trainers, and it makes people like MJ look bad, and nobody wants to go to somebody like MJ because because of that dickhead over here that uh, don't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Well, you, you have to, if you go to a person, first thing first, look at him from, you know, how he looks, you know. Yeah. If you're a real personal trainer, because the first thing you have to look at how he looks. You know? Does he do, does he practice what he preaches, is what right. they say. Is he doing what he's telling you to do? Can he do it? You know, that kind of thing. You know, there's the person that, you know, I don't know, 300 pounds, personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> but can you tell the person? I get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling.